I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile. Right now we're visiting with Sarah Kesty, who is one of two Teachers of the Year from the Twin Rivers Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. So tell us about yourself. Tell us you know, where you teach and tell us what you teach. Um, I have the opportunity to teach in North Highlands and I teach, as you said, for Twin Rivers School District at Oakdale School. Um, I was teaching the kindergarten through eighth grade RSP program for um, a number of years, and this year brings a new challenge for a second grade classroom. So, mm. second grade now. So, what do you think the differences are going to be between what you've done in the second grade? Um, you know, I was I'm bummed to give up some of that holistic whole school approach, but it's in trade for. Um, a real intimate setting with just my same 20 all day and um, so I'll have some depth of impact that might be different I had breadth before and now it's going to be depth and um, I'm really looking forward to gaining that gen ed perspective so that if ultimately I do go back to a special ed position I will be a more well-rounded educator so so explain what RSP is, what, what do you mean? RSP stands for Resource Specialist Program. It's, um, when I explain it to the kids, we just say, look, we, we chose you to be part of this group that um, gets to explore new ways to learn and um, new ways to get that high achievement that we've tested and we know you can meet, but right now your scores, your school scores aren't showing that. So now we get to be the detectives and find the path to that high achievement level. Mm -hmm. um, technically, it's students usually with learning disabilities, but you can explain it with that disability connotation, or you can explain it with the, you know, hey, we get to be detectives and find a path, and it's mm -hmm. way more empowering that way, so. And you're just helping them overcome challenges to get to a level you know where they can be. Right, yeah. and sometimes the process of overcoming the challenge is the most rewarding, you know, sometimes the, what could have been a disability ends up being as a gift. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's fun. And I know, I know I'm going to get that type of situation in second grade too, so. So how long have you been a teacher? This is my 10th year. Okay. So uh, in that amount of time, what kind of changes have you seen in education uh, or in the classroom that you might consider, you know, challenges over those years that you've had to work to overcome with, you know, with students? Um, I definitely the challenge that scares me the most is apathy you know give me a naughty kid and I'll figure out what makes them tick and get them engaged and you know there's a lot of trickery that goes into good mm -hmm. teaching I can yeah. I can handle that but when a kid seems disengaged and they don't believe in themselves that's one of the hardest things not impossible but it's one of the most deeply troubling to me because that's a kid that you absolutely have to reach mm -hmm. um, so, and I haven't seen an increase or decrease, you know, you kind of get those kids over the years. Um, but as far as great trends in education changing, you know, I, it might not make me popular, but I'm pretty excited for Common Core. Mm -hmm. I think um, it's a huge challenge, but to be empowered as an educator now to, and be allowed to work on skills rather than like just this vast content, I think ultimately we are gonna produce humans again, you know, just well-rounded, smart, contributing citizens, so I'm excited. So is it because you're able to work on the critical thinking part rather than just kind of the, the question and answer part? Right. Yeah. I mean, I'm kind of ashamed to admit that I taught a before school test taking strategies class and you know we do pop tarts and I tried to make it fun but the reality was I was spending 45 minutes teaching them how to t trick a test and think about what I could have done if we were practicing speaking skills or you know job skills or something that mattered after high school you know mm -hmm. so and now with that pressure off and with that yeah I am I'm allowed to teach them how to think I'm allowed to teach them how to be um, independent and creative and all those things that were almost devalued with the ABCD choice sort of assessment so mm -hmm. so it's, it's a big change mm -hmm. yeah now you were talking earlier about you know dealing with uh, the kids that are um, a challenge and hard to motivate what are some of the things that you do when you reach when you get those kids to really try to reach them what do you do oh I have a really good story and I'm not going to use her real name but um I had a student that 
she made it very well known that she didn't like me when she met me, didn't trust me, didn't I didn't know anything about her world, you know, that sort of she teenager, um, that sort of deal. And she definitely did not want to do math. Just, I mean, she'd literally rip her page or somehow spill on it or, you know, there was always this like natural disaster when math was ever on the table. Um, or she would bully other kids so that she'd be sent out. I mean, she had a lot of coping mechanisms, um, but deep down you could see that she was in pain and there was something that was motivating her to avoid all the work. And so um, through getting to know her and like just a little bit of humor and a whole lot of I love you anyway, you know, mm -hmm. um, she, she kind of started to trust me and I started to gain some insight into her world. and. It was really fascinating when she, um, I invited her to come to her own IEP and see her scores and really have a glimpse into what was going on with her, with the idea in my head that it's a celebration and you know, like, let's come check this out. I want you to know mm -hmm. what your strengths are and see this because I had the inkling that she didn't really believe in herself. I had no idea how true that was because when I showed her where her IQ was, and in fact, she had closed her gap, her academic achievement gap. She wasn't going to qualify for Learning Center anymore, but I kept her, mm -hmm. <laughs> just as a guest, because yeah. you know it was, it was an effective support. We weren't gonna drop her. Um, but when she saw her score, she looks at it and she says, you mean I'm not retarded? Mm -hmm. And then the whole world just sort of fell into place, and I said, that's it. It was all self-perception. It was all her lens saying, don't even try, because somewhere along the way she acquired this fixed mindset about herself, and it wasn't true. Or maybe someone along the way told her that she oh. wasn't going to become something, and that's what, what happened. And told her that she was a bully, and told her that, in, and so she's kind of wearing this coat of other people's opinions, and it wasn't her. And so I think through our relationship, I kind of allowed her to try on other things, and mentor people which was super uncomfortable for her because she was she had mm -hmm. identified with that bully position and that wasn't actually who she was so um within i'm gonna say like two weeks she was participating in math and she ended up with the highest grade at the end of the year wow. and here's a kid who would have like done anything not to do math so um yeah i mean she was one of my most troubling in that i knew i needed to reach her but boy is it just it makes my heart so full thinking about her. <laughs> now, had you always wanted to teach? Um, you know, I think I danced around it because I wanted to do lots of other things too. But um, yeah, actually when I told my family I, I had finally made my epiphany of teaching, they all stared at me like, you've always been a teacher, haven't you? Like, oh. you're always, you've always been going to school for that. And I'm like, no, I was going to school for journalism and advertising and all these other things. Well, apparently teaching chose me. <laughs> And so, uh, now that teaching has chosen you, and you've been chosen as a, as a Teacher of the Year, what is that like for you? What does that feel like to be a Teacher of the Year? Oh boy. Um, humbling and a little bit unreal. It took a while to sink in, you know, because um, it's amazing and I'm so thankful to be recognized, but I know that I work with some incredible people who also deserve the same award. So, um, at first I was almost embarrassed, like I didn't want the attention, you know, I wanted to just be with my kids, but then I saw it as an opportunity to, to spread good messages and, you know, maybe inspire future teachers that were thinking of possibly going into the profession or even um, inspire kids through mm -hmm. like having a wider audience and a, more um, opportunities to speak to people so so what do you say to those people who are thinking about being a teacher what's what's your sales pitch for those who would be really good teachers I'm glad you clarified would be really good because some of them I'm like eh, I don't know you know mm -hmm. it really it takes a particular person to be an effective educator so um, I, my sales pitch is just be prepared to work as hard as you ever have and love something that like partially kills you sometimes and you know it's a it's a real dynamic job but um and never feel you will never feel like you're good at it because there's always going to be something that you can do better and always going to be a kid that you can help more and reach in deeper ways mm -hmm. Well, congratulations to you on being named a Teacher of the Year. Thank we we you. appreciate your time. We've been speaking with Sarah Kesty, who is one of two Teachers of the Year for the Twin Rivers Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.